My mission is to help you get the most out of your life and your flying career. That's how I usually start my videos. And normally we focus on getting more out of your flying career. Today I want to talk to you about getting more out of your life and how flying did just that for me. Let me ask you something. How does it make you feel when you fly? Listen to pilots screaming the term stoked, epic, just send it, amazing. That sounds great, but be honest. Is that all that comes to mind? Those are the words you may use to describe how you feel to the guys in the pub, or your co-workers, or when you just want to brag. It is the social media perfect picture that we love to paint when we don't want to feel exposed. It can be a funny summary, sure, but those words don't do the full experience justice. If those terms describe how flying makes you feel, really, you are missing out on chances to push your limits, to experience more awesomeness and to grow as a pilot and as a human being. Be honest with yourself. You know what I'm talking about if you're still with me now. How we feel while flying is not a universal constant. It can differ from person to person and from day to day. I have had days where I felt like being the master of the universe and days where I wanted to hide under a rock and cry. Days at which everything went according to plan and days where I almost crapped my pants only minutes after takeoff and was glad to be back on the ground. Sometimes I felt really in touch with my inner self and sometimes I was showing off as compensation for not valuing myself enough. At the moment of writing this I am 38 years old and I have been flying for 26 years. I made my first solo flight at the age of 12 on a hang glider. Yes, things were different then. <laughs> Man, this statement makes me feel old. I've flown hang gliders, sailplanes, small propeller craft, commercial airliners, helicopters and paragliders. Some for hundreds of hours, some only as a taster. I think because of this I can relate to your flying world and your life, at least a little bit. No matter what craft you use, we share a beautiful thing, the passion for flying. I have experienced enough to realize there is so much I don't know, so much I cannot do, or at least not yet, and maybe never will. But this is fine with me. I love flying and what it does for me. One of my flight instructors used to say, flying is like a mirror to the soul. Now what the fuck does that mean? It is a summary of everything I just told you the past few minutes. For me this statement connected the dots. I felt the connection between what I've been experiencing all those years while flying and what was going on inside of me. When you are learning to fly, you go on a journey. This goes for all skill levels. It's very different from learning most other skills for a variety of reasons. Maybe the most obvious one, there is a certain amount of actual danger involved. We all feel this while still being fresh students for our first flights. It heightens our senses. It changes the way we think, we move, we speak. It changes the look in our eyes. And this is not just the first flight. It happens regularly when we face new challenges in flying. Us pilots, we are thirsty for experiences. Each in our own way, we are challenging ourselves. This can be in the form of flying further, longer, higher. But also flying at new and amazing locations, trying a new wing, new harness, learning a new skill or maneuver, or even just taking to the sky after months of not flying. We convert the anticipation into memories. In this process energy is released that makes us long for more experiences and so the circle continues. So why is learning to fly like a mirror to the soul you ask? Because it is confronting. What happens inside that little brain of yours gets reflected on the way you deal with what you are learning. Have trouble trusting others? You will doubt decisions made by the instructor and will continuously be looking for ways to do things differently. Are you afraid to commit to things in life? 
your takeoff run will be slow and choppy. Always overthinking everything, you won't feel what the glider is doing when you're trying to ground handle. The examples are endless. These may all seem like negative things, but to me they are just things. Things you can learn from and grow. I hope you recognize some of these examples. Probably you have some of your own. Maybe your example is not about making your first takeoff, but you might have run into yourself when making your first long duration flight, your first dune soaring flight, your first over 100 kilometer flight. It doesn't matter. How we fly can show us something of what goes on inside. We just have to let it. I consider myself to be a spiritual person, but that might not fit into your world now or at all. That's fine, we all have our own path in life. For me the word soul is very normal to use. You might have trouble with the word soul in this context. Feel free to replace it with something else, maybe deeper self. Flying is the mirror to the deeper self. That sounds good as well, doesn't it? I think this is actually a gift that flying in general brings us. I think this principle is everlasting, as long as you are open to it. We are learning and growing all the time, no matter our current skill level. To grow we must face ourselves, point at the routines, the behaviors, the attitudes that we want to change and then first embrace them. Then we can start to change. I've experienced this many times myself and as a coach it is part of my professional routine for helping others. But to face ourselves we must first see ourselves. Flying is the mirror that we can use to do that. Time for a practical example. When I was in training for my paragliding license, the last item still to be checked off was what is best described as general airworthiness. I had done all the tasks, checked all the boxes, I just needed that certificate. Now in some countries and for some schools, getting declared airworthy is the automatic result of having met all the requirements that the governing authority asks of you. You checked all the boxes, then you are airworthy. But it is not always that simple. And in hindsight, I think that's for the better. In the Netherlands, this certificate is an official statement that basically says that the signing instructor deems you capable of flying all by yourself in a responsible manner. It is meant as a sort of backstop document, an overarching declaration of, well, independence. And my instructor would not give me one. I was angry. How did he dare not give me my license? I had made long duration flights while others in my class were still doing top to bottom glide flights. I was allowed to take off from the high and difficult takeoff while I had 10 flights less than the norm for that takeoff. I had been flying hang gliders for over 15 years and even made loops with them. I made target landings consistently after making only my third landing. I had done commercial pilot training for crying out loud. Why did I not get that certificate? I was a great pilot after all. How could he not see that? But I was also cocky and sloppy. I was a know-it-all. One time my glider did not turn fast enough so I accidentally pulled it into a spin because I just decided to use brute force and jam that brake down. This was in the traffic pattern at 100 meters altitude in my first week of paragliding training. My takeoffs were wild, almost angry. Someone described it as if I was trying to rip the lines off the glider and make holes in the mountain everywhere my feet touched. That someone was my dad, by the way. Still my flying buddy till this day. Many instructors would say that it was a lack of skill. A great instructor, however, would see it was a lack of proper mindset. But all these things I did not see at that time. I just saw the things that made me a sky god, who was wrongfully not given a license. So I asked my instructor in my politest way, while my blood was boiling, mind you, what else do you expect me to demonstrate to you? 
and what he said really confused me. I want you to stop demonstrating me stuff. I want you to start flying for yourself. That night we sat by the campfire, my dad and I, drinking beer, contemplating our miserable flying careers. And the funny thing is, my dad had got the exact same speech. He was in the same situation and also did not get his airworthiness. So, no license. It hit us like a sledgehammer. We had been flying to check those boxes. Do this maneuver in X seconds. Land within the circle. Make X flights. Check, check, check. Flying is not checking boxes. It can be part of it, sure, but it is not just that. That night we were on the brink of learning a lesson I still cherish to this day. At that point in my life I did everything purely goal oriented. And we decided to take a leap of faith. And for you I know this may sound silly, but for us it was wildly unknown terrain. We decided, what if we just fly for fun? Instead of achieving certain goals, like getting that license, what would that bring us? And please note, this was not a means to an end. We really fundamentally decided to change our approach to flying that night. The next morning, we told the instructor that we were going to stop working towards that license. We just wanted to do a bit of thermaling, no exercises, no tasks, just chilling. He frowned. And he said something like, okay guys, it's your week, we can accommodate that. But we did not care for his approval. We skipped the first flight of the day because we wanted to get another coffee in the morning sunshine. And the rest of that week was amazing. We had more fun than ever, even while we did less. If we compared it to our old approach, we were slackers. But now we were just enjoying flying. We started feeling and experiencing flying at a whole new level. It was one of the biggest eye-openers of my life. At the end of the week our instructor came up to us and gave us the awareness certificates. He caught us completely by surprise. I see you are now enjoying yourselves in the air, he said. For the first time, that was the missing ingredient. This did not just change the way I dealt with flying, it changed the way I live my life. Of course there were more talks with that instructor, with flying buddies, with friends that never saw a paraglider before. The picture of who I was and how I was living my life did of course not just snap into place right there and then. But a piece of myself that I had not seen before got lit up brightly by this experience. This was one of the life events that helped me live in the moment. Which is the only way you can enjoy the moment. It made me see the way I lived my life had huge parallels with how I used to approach flight training. That helped me get more out of life. Way more. I hope next time you are flying and you feel something that feels significant you will find the time to reflect on that a bit. I am sure your experiences will be very different. You are a very different person after all. But you also have this mirror. What does this mirror show you? And how can you use that to get more out of life?